1 Timothy 4 and 1. Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachers of demons. Why are there so many religions out there? It almost seems like it would be impossible to find the right one. The reason why there's so many different religions out there is because everyone is running from the same one God. The hardest thing to do is come to the true one and only God. And the reason why it's so hard is because it takes full submission. And you can search every religion there is. All of them seem to have something very easy about them. The, um, the religion of Buddhism you don't really have any set rules. It's just, you know, find your own path. And, you know, Hinduism is kind of the same thing. There's no real right or wrong. Even with the religions that might seem like they're more holy, like the Mormon and the Jehovah Witness, they may seem like they're actually more um, obedient and more organized. But the truth is, there are some people that just simply have these kind of personalities all on their own. There's some people, they just have this neat um, way of, of growing up and they, they like being neat and they actually like, they don't like going to clubs or, or, or doing drugs. And so this is their personality automatically. And because they have this personality, they feel like they're sinless, but they still have a false doctrine because um, whenever you're in this kind of religion, that believes that works can save you, then you're going against what the Bible teaches because there's nothing that we can do to save us. So it takes full submission to God and understanding that it's not us that are doing anything. So it's very easy to become self-righteous and become a Mormon or a Jehovah Witness and believe that you're earning your way to heaven. And this in itself is a sin. This is the sin of self-righteousness and pride to even think that anything we can do is more powerful than Jesus' blood on the cross. There's nothing that can save us. There's nothing more powerful than Jesus' sacrifice. So him dying is the only thing that can save us. So to think that you can um, be a better person and that can get you to heaven would be saying that Jesus, your sacrifice wasn't enough. I have to do something. So let's um, have an understanding of this. In, um, in James, we're told that, in James uh, chapter 2, we're told that um, uh, faith without works is dead. And so a lot of people, they love to use this verse as a, a way to say that we have to, you know, do something to be saved. But that's not what this verse is saying. This verse is simply saying that for other believers, for us to know who is a believer, we need to see the works. So this is not a way to be saved, but it's a way for us to know who actually has genuine faith. Because if you do believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins, and you do believe you've been given eternal life without anything you've done, then this will create works inside of you. This will make you a better person. And this is the doctrine that um, a lot of these uh, Mormons and Jehovah Witnesses just don't seem to uh, catch a grasp of. They in in um, the Book of Mormon, in the book of Nephi, they're told that they are saved by grace after all they can do. So this is taking the scriptures that has been given to us, the inspired word of God, and it's twisting them and adding something to it. And this is what all cults and, uh, and false religions do. They take the scriptures that have been given to us from the Bible, the word from the prophets, and they have twisted them to add their own touch to it. So this will bring out the self-righteous attitude in these people to make them think that, look, I'm not going to heaven because Jesus died for me. I'm, I'm going to heaven because Jesus died for me and because I'm a good person. And this is adding on their self-righteousness. This is adding on their works until salvation. And this is against what the Bible teaches. This is against what Jesus teaches. There are many religions out there all of them are easy to become a part of. The hardest thing to do is to become completely humble and say, I have nothing to bring to the table. There's nothing that I can do to earn salvation. There's nothing 
that I can do to make myself a better person. It takes God. This is why it's the hardest religion. This is why everyone's denying this God because they can't put in any of their works. They can't blow their head up. They have nothing to brag or boast about when you completely submit to God. But it's very easy to understand how people can fall for these false religions because they always have this outward look of being the real deal. But 2 Corinthians 11, 14, and no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. The outside can very, very well throw you off. Someone dressed very nice, someone that doesn't cuss, and somebody that, that's in church every day, you think, oh, well, they have to be more holy. They have to be, you know, um, in some kind of relationship with God because of the outside appearance. But inside, they're full of dead man bones. Just like Jesus told to the Pharisees and scribes who were in the church every day, knew the Bible in and out, but were self-righteous. This is the one thing that, that uh, made Jesus the most angry. This is what he attacked the most harshly was the self-righteousness in false religious people. So we have to remember John 14 and 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. There's no other way to God. Not through what you do, not through some kind of ritual that you do, not by saying some kind of Hail Marys, not by um, um, confessing your sins to another person, only through the blood of Jesus Christ. Understanding that Jesus died on the cross for your sin and that there's nothing you can do to be saved, but you have been saved, should be the best news you can hear. But it takes a humble heart to realize that we have nothing to do with this and once you're able to do this then the works that 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 you want to see in your life will be taking place not because of you but because of the sacrifice that has been given Jesus sacrifice and blood that he shed on the cross will activate the sanctification in your life once you understand this this will generate a new heart Understanding that someone has given their life for you, for you to have everlasting life, gives you a new appreciation for this God. And you won't do these um, good works so you can earn heaven because you've already been given heaven. You will do these works just to please your Father, just to live pleasing in His sight. So this is how the sanctification process works. It doesn't work so you can go to heaven. You've already been given eternal life. All you have to do is believe. But because you are given this eternal life, this is what will cause you to have these works. So it's very important that we understand this process because getting it wrong will have all the difference in your character, in your heart, in the way that you can look at this whole thing as some kind of business proposition, as if God owes you something for the things you do. This will create a different kind of heart in you and it will make you a completely different person than the true belief and faith in the death on the cross of Jesus Christ. Something to think about. Do take good care of yourself.